Exciting day. Welcome to Mike McDonald Day. Uh, uh, so much excitement, right? Uh, that's, that's the word for right now. Uh, it's been a long process, but uh, I'm so excited for uh, the former players, the current players, uh, the players, our future players that will be coming in, uh, everybody in the building, the 12s, uh, the Seahawk community, I mean, just everybody, you know, it's, it's uh, the coaches, like the, the, the coaches that are going to be coming in here uh, that we already started working on and everything. Uh, just so excited for everybody because uh, this is the future right here. This is where it's going. And uh, I think you're going to learn and get to know Mike that uh, he's a special dude. And... Uh, you know, the process was awesome. Uh, obviously, I want to thank uh, Jody, you know, for her, her guidance and leadership. You know, we had a clear directive. Uh, Chuck and Bert, everybody that was involved. We had uh, 19 people uh, do our DEI training so that all the candidates could feel everybody in the, in the building and know how important it is to all of us uh, and what it means to be supporting uh, the new head coach and especially all the players because at the end of the day it is all about the players <coughs> and uh, you know I think about uh, the process I think about uh, uh, faith in people and so uh, my mom would always tell me you know Johnny uh, God helps those who can't help themselves and uh, what a cool deal because uh, wow I can't even remember now the days are running together but last or, you know Sunday before they played I was uh, at church, and uh, you know, people were probably looking at me like, "Wow, that guy's really, you know, been sinning a lot or something." That guy's crying his <laughs> tail off right now <laughs> um, because I wanted the Ravens to lose and I wanted the Lions to lose. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I, I uh, you know, it's kind of probably creepy for Mike, but uh, a lot of we've been blessed to be around uh, over the years. A lot of uh, talented people throughout the National Football League and a lot of connections and uh, you know it was it was really cool to do all the research and, and, and on Mike and I think I might have creeped his, his uh, beautiful bride Steph out a little bit too. Where's Steph at? There you go. Thank you so much for this uh, leap of faith. We, 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 we've, it's been quick but it's awesome. But uh, yeah the people it's, it's just really special for all the people and uh, involved and, and at the end of the day it comes down to people and relationships and trust and and for this it, it, it happened quickly with Mike. With Mike I would say uh, that you know I, what, I've, what I've learned uh, from preparing for all this is that Mike is a, is a learning networker not a, not a climbing networker and there's a huge difference there. This has happened quickly for him but when you sit down with him and you get to meet him you understand why the whys of, wow, he knows that guy, he knows that guy, he knows this guy. Like, I've been in the league for 30-some years, and we know a ton of the same people. And uh, so that really stood out. And then through the process, too, I listened to a, I listened to a, a, a podcast where uh, a gentleman was saying, you know, uh, it, was a, it was a hiring thing, and they, were, they got into hiring, and, you know, this and that. And it didn't matter what industry it was. It's, it's uh, all about who's changing the marketplace. Who's going to change the marketplace? And it just hit me like, okay, when we're interviewing all these people, who's going to change the marketplace? And uh, the product is the product. He's done it. He's seen it. And uh, that's why he was assistant coach of the year. Uh, you know, there, I've had two really strong feelings leaving Pittsburgh several years ago. Like, we will never, ever look like that again. Uh, I think it might have been our first year or second year. I can't remember. It was not, it was not cool and um, leaving Baltimore this year. And uh, that was not cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on behalf of Jody Allen uh, and you know, all of the 12s and, and uh, everybody that's de near and dear to uh, my heart in this building, I want to introduce Mike McDonald as the new head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. So. Thanks, John. Uh, this is a, 
humbling, humbling feeling that I'm feeling right now in, in front of everybody. And I want to, especially everybody in the organization in the back, it's, uh, this is pretty cool. Just, it feels like we're in this thing together, you know? And, um, and it, this is a responsibility that my wife and I, we take, we take extremely seriously. We, from afar, you know, we've, we're, we're East Coast folks, but, you know, we've, we've grown up on the East Coast, but uh, we do have family out here in the area, and, we, and we've, we've seen this organization operate from afar, and uh, I've had nothing but respect for the ownership, especially John, how they've operated, Coach Carroll, um, the ability to compete for championships at a consistent um, pace, and how they play, and the spirit of the players um, has been something that I respect a lot. And going through the process um, and, and meeting John and, and the leadership team, I think the first thing that really popped to me was the parallels of, of the organization that I've been working for for 10 years and where I've really grown into the person and the man and the coach that I am today. And that was extremely appealing to me. And to hear John talk about people and how important that is, uh, was the driving force of, of, of why we want to be here. And it is a leap of faith. And, but this is a special city. And this is a great football city, man. And we got the best fans in the world. And um, I understand where, where this organization wants to go. And I feel like we're aligned on how we want to get there. And I'm just juiced to go do it. And there's, no, there's going to be no secrets secret thing of you know scheme or secret plays that are going to get us there faster. It's going to take a lot of hard work by finding the right people and doing it the right way, treating people the right way, building everybody up throughout the building. I want everybody to feel like they're a part of this mission. And it's going to take all we got one day at a time. And it's that simple. It's one conversation at a time. It's one relationship at a, one relationship at a time. And, uh, and I'm just, I, you know, it's, my wife and I have been talking, just like, this feels like home already, you know? It just feels, it feels, like, feels, like, feels like God put us in this position. Um, we, played for, we prayed for clarity throughout this whole process, and it became very clear that this is where we're supposed to be. So we're just extremely excited to go along with the theme of just um, to get to work and to get to know everybody. I mean, this is the second day on the job. <laughs> Feels like I've been here two months already, you know. But uh, but um, I'm just really excited that it started already. You know, we're, we've gotten to work. We've already contacted you know a lot of coaches that we're very interested in, in talking with. But we'll talk about that in a minute. But before I take any questions, you know, I'd love to take some time and, and just and thank people that uh, have helped us get to this point. I've referenced her already, but my my wife Stephanie is uh, absolute rock star. I uh, I love you. She's um, you'll get to know her and the city will fall in love with her. Um, she is a absolute rock star and a saint of a human. So thank you. Um, my, my family, my dad, uh, he, he is a, uh, he, is, he is quite the, he is a, he is a great man and he has taught me integrity, humility, and determination um, in doing things the right way and, and that'll pay off in the long run. So thank you, dad. My mom, uh, my mom has taught me if you're going to do something, you better do it right. And, uh, and that stuck with me for a long time. So thank you, Mom. And my two heroes are, are my two older sisters, Maggie and Kate. Kate actually has lived here in the city for quite a while. She lives in Texas now. But um, I've been following their example my whole life. And they're, uh, they're pretty incredible people. And, and uh, thank you. Um, the Ravens organization is a special organization. There's a, there's a lot of things that these two organizations share in common. And uh, I'd just be remiss not to just to mention some of those folks, starting with Steve Bashotti and his wife Renee, um, Ozzie Newsom. I always tell the story that my first week as an intern, I was walking down the hall and, and uh, Ozzie saw me and, you know, and, and that was pretty daunting for a, for a 20 something year old intern. And Ozzie knew my name and he, and he took investment into me and my experience and that'll something, that's something that'll carry to this organization. We want everybody to feel vital um, and, and vital to the mission and uh, feel invested in. And so, Ozzy, thank you for, your, for who you are as a person and, um, and, the, and really the mark that you've left on this, on this league and, and, and all the people in the Ravens organization. Eric DaCosta, um, first class. Um, and really, 
all the people in the Ravens organization, I just really hope, it's hard to name everybody, but you guys know who you are, and I've been in contact with some of you, but um, those are relationships that we'll have for the rest of our lives. And uh, there's some special people in that building, and that's a special community, uh, very similar to here. So I look forward to building those relationships with everybody uh, in our building now, and uh, there'll be something that we'll be able to cherish, you know, moving forward. And finally, not finally, but uh, with the Ravens, the Harbaugh family, uh, Jim, Coach Jack, Jackie, uh, especially John and uh, his wife Ingrid, um, talk about taking a leap of faith and investing in some, you know a young buck like me back in the day, and and uh, having the having the guts to to give me opportunities over time, and and put his name on the line, and um, his investment in me, uh, John Harps, uh, I really appreciate that and. Obviously, we talked about it, but uh, our relationship's very, very, very special to me. And so, thank you for your investment in my wife and I. Mm. And then, you know, moving here, moving here to Seattle, uh, Jody Allen. Um, just want to thank her for um, trusting the process and empowering John to go through it and having the patience, um, you know, to. Uh, Trust the fact that they were interested in me. You know, thank you for hanging out, hanging in there. Hopefully, I was wishing that we'd have to wait a couple more weeks, but um, it did happen fast. But you felt like it was a first-class operation, and uh, her investment in this city and how much she cares about this team became very obvious to me, and I was that was very appealing. And then uh, this man right here, John Schneider. I just I want to thank you for for uh, how you how you do what you do and the person that you are. And I know our relationship is very young, but when you feel a connection with someone and, and uh, you feel like your values are aligned, that's a powerful thing. And so I think, uh, I think we're gonna make an amazing team and a great, amazing partnership. And I, I'm really excited to work with you uh, for a long time. So thank stuff. you. And then, um, and, and the players, both with Ra at the Ravens and here in, and here in Seattle, uh, if my guys in the Ravens, we've, we've talked to a couple, I'll reach out to you, you know, when I, my phone stops buzzing and the fire hose turns off a little bit. But uh, I hope you understand that this is why we do what we do, is about the players. Um, we're trying to build something special. Um, the, and the players are the ones that, that, that drive the bus, and, and they lay it on the line. And, and the guys in, uh, on our team last year, they did that. And um, I just really thank you. And again, relationships, man, and I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, honored and humbled that I was able to coach you for the time that we had and our relationships will last for a long time. And then I, our players here and the players that we'll be able to coach um, for the Seahawks, man, I just I hope you understand that you're the driving force behind everything that we do. And I can guarantee you this, you will get everything out of myself and our coaching staff every day. And we will not stop until we want to get to where we get, okay? And I hope that's very clear to you. And you're the first thing that goes through our mind when we make decisions. And uh, that's the only way to do it. That's the only way to win. And I'm just very excited for the opportunity again. Thanks, John. Thank you for your time. And uh, we'll take questions, I guess. John, there's so many different things. But being worth the wait, what was it before you ever met Mike that made this worth the wait for the interview and the hype? Uh, you know the product really. You know, watching the film, uh, feeling their uh, feeling their defense that day, being there in that stadium, and then all the uh, relationships and thanks, Jen, because there's so many people that really opened their hearts and, and uh, they didn't have to they didn't have to share all the information with me if they did. And so, so all you people, you guys know everybody, tons of people in this league, and you know, um, cheerleaders. <laughs> we found out a lot of stuff, and so uh, we were doing our due diligence, and um, yeah, just the, I, would, I would say that the, the background, and then you know, the, you know, in scouting we call it checking boxes, right? And then you know, sitting down in person, uh, we had a lot of great candidates. You guys did a great job, and, and um, people in this building felt them, and um, it's just a I don't know how to describe it other than it's it's a it's a feeling, it's a connection, there's clarity. Um, and then everything that everybody says about his great reputation came to light uh, very quickly. It was, it was, it was, it was very evident, and uh, they drove all the way from uh, Baltimore down to to, uh, to Dallas and jumped on a plane and came out here, and the rest is history.
John, you use the phrase change the marketplace. How does Mike do that? He's a disruptor. He's changed it. He's, he's you look at their product, you look at their defense, you know, you look at you know the, the, Ra the Ravens organization. Um, you know, Ozzy and I, and now <laughs> Eric as well, we always used to, you know, joke with each other, like, you know, we have a spy in our draft room or something because they keep picking all the players we want to pick and vice versa, and Ozzy would send me a text, or Eric would send me a text, like, you know, like, dang it, you know, like, dang, you took our guy or whatever, and we've always just joked about that, and it's a great organization, so when you're, when you're, when you're hiring somebody, I mean, you look at the background, that means a lot, so, you know, you're talking about a great organization, you talk, like the, the Ravens, and and uh, John Harbaugh, the Harbaugh's, and you know Jim, and and then Michigan. I mean, fantastic. John, obviously, the football acumen is obviously there. What about Mike as a person, as a leader, convinced you regarding sort of everything that comes with being a person? Yeah, we weren't talking like you know schematics and you know moving the ship in. I was coaches talking to your coach speak like this. Yeah. But we didn't even get into that. It was uh, communication, leadership, clarity. Uh, I think that's you know it jumps off. It, it, with, with Mike, uh, I talked to several people that had interviewed him already, and they're like, wait till you look, look in this guy's eyes, man. He's, he's, he's there, he's present, he's on it. And, uh, and, he, and he was, and everybody in that room felt it. John, you said it happened fast. Sorry, is that Bob? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 said it happened, you, you said it happened fast. What, what can you tell us about the process when you guys first made contact and kind of how that all went? Well, uh, Patrick Mahomes was doing his thing, and I apologize again. I've apologized to him several times. Um, so, to be able to, you know, send in our slip, you know, we went through our, our we went through our situation. What, like, I don't know, it feels like several months ago now. But uh, you know, we got through that process, and then there's a lot of things with the league office you need to take care of. Mike and the Ravens and, and the Niners did such a great job; they had the first seed. So uh, you can always speak to those individuals um, until that. Monday, so you know we went through uh, our job description, um, that needs approval, uh, uh, all of our DEI training, um, and then organizing ourselves. Uh, you know what are we looking for? What the clarity of our questions, and uh, you know uh, how are we going to you know find the answers as quickly as we can? So we were unable to interview Mike on Monday. So uh, you know, like I said, we're just really hoping that we'd be able to. Uh, uh, you know, the Lions lost and the Ravens lost. It wasn't personal at all. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but uh, no, we'd be able to, you know, fly to, we had a plan in place to, to uh, fly to Detroit. We flew to Detroit on Monday night, uh, or Monday afternoon. Uh, flew to Baltimore Monday night. Uh, had our interview uh, with Mike uh, at 9 o'clock on Tuesday morning. And uh, he crushed it. And, uh, yeah, we flew back here and it was on. Uh, Tracy and I picked uh, Steph and Mike up at the airport and had a great evening. And like Mo says, we chopped it up a little bit, you know, um, hung out for a while, and it was just it was just natural, easy, clear. Mike, what if Baltimore had won and we're playing in the Super Bowl? Would you have waited? Congratulations. What do you mean? You wouldn't have waited. Yeah, the reputation was, was really strong. So, I mean, I can't tell you like 100%, like, but the reputation was so strong, we didn't, we didn't have to get there. So Mike, I don't have to answer that question because we didn't have to get there. Mike, you, you, you obviously have talked to other teams through this process in, in previous years. What about the conversation with John made you feel like this was the right opportunity now? Well, like I said, there were opportunities to talk with, uh, with teams before and uh, understanding there possibly was interest but given the time frame and when that opportunity would come. But our mentality going in was just let's go with an open mind. And, and if there's a great opportunity that, with a great partnership that feels like it's the right thing, then uh, that'd be something you're willing to pursue. And, and then we had some great conversations throughout the process. But um, like, I, like I said, when, when we started talking about vision and how we wanted to play and the direction that uh, we felt like, that I felt like how I'd like to take the team and how that paralleled how they, what they saw, it just became very clear that um, the thing that you're looking, that was the thing that you're looking for. So um, that's, it just made, it made sense at that point. Mike, you're known for your defense. Obviously it's been phenomenal your last three years as a, as a coordinator, but I think a lot of people are curious about your 
offensive philosophies. You played for two guys that like to run the ball a lot. Is it fair to yeah. say that that's kind of your offensive philosophy as well, or do you feel kind of differently about that from John and Jim? Yeah, the percentage of when you run the ball and how much and all that, like that's that's all adjustable. To me, it, it's going to mirror our, our football team. Like, we're going to be a physical football team. Um, we're going to have answers. We're going to try to be explosive and really do it and build it around the players that we have. We're going through the process right now of who's going to be, you know, helping design that and ultimately calling plays. So um, to have a specific answer for you, what it's going to look like, I can't do that now, but that'll come into focus here uh, sooner than later. Mike, what made this a leap of faith? And how close were you to perhaps just saying what you already knew in Baltimore? Well, I had a great job. We had a great job in Baltimore. I mean, you're, you know, a lot of, like I referenced earlier, there's a lot of great people there. I loved our players. And uh, you know you're gonna always have a chance to be successful. So we have a lot of you know family on the East Coast and things like that. So moving out west and being and moving away from those folks, uh, you know, it's a leap of faith. Mike, your motto in ba welcome to Seattle. First off, thanks. Second, <laughs> you had a motto in Baltimore: play like a Raven. You transfer that to Seattle, play like a Seahawk, and what exactly does that mean to you? No, we're not gonna we're not gonna translate that. But what what the spirit of that is, um, we'll we'll come over and we'll be able to manifest that. You know, as we have conversations with the coaches and, and, and John and, and try to get our vision um, you know, aligned and moving forward and obviously get, get input from the players as well. What's important to them? What, kind of, what do they want to see when, when we turn on the tape? So there's no, we're not going to translate that saying over now. Hey, Mike, um, you obviously have been calling plays for Baltimore and Michigan the last three years. Is that something that you still plan on doing now that you're head coach? Yeah, right now, right now the plan is I'll be calling the plays. Um, now, depending on who the defense coordinator is and when uh, when that becomes that, ultimately I'm the head coach of the football team, so I want to coach the football team. And right now, the best way that we can win is, in my opinion, is for me to call the plays. And then when it becomes obvious that um, someone else is ready to go and we see it the same way, then then we'll make that we'll make that change. Mike, a lot of coaches sit in this you know, new head coach chair where you've taken over the team that won two, three, four games and right. before. What about this roster? Uh, yeah, that was definitely a, a part of it. Um, we, you know, we, we we went against Seattle this year, and uh, there's a lot of great players on this team. I mean, we've done a great job of of uh, drafting. It's a, it's a young core, and so uh, we got a great opportunity to to build these guys and and, and build a really competitive team uh, sooner than later. From a defensive standpoint, you talk about the importance of players. What stood out to you while you're interviewing for this job about the players you're going to be inheriting on this defense, and where they? Well, there's a combination there. There's a couple, you know, you were watching the, the defense on a lot of crossover tape throughout the season, so you realize that there's a lot of talent there, and there's obviously guys that have great reputations that are on the, on the team as well. Don't know a lot of them personally, so I'm interested about who they are as people and, and uh, kind of what drives them there. And then there's a lot of guys, you know, like Spoon, guys that we did, you know, did on, uh, that we evaluated throughout the draft, and guys were really excited about, but, you know, obviously weren't able to be picked when we were picking in Baltimore. Mike, can you tell us about the origin of your defense, how it came together, what it grew from, et cetera? Yeah, this is an interesting uh, answer from you know from uh, if John Harbaugh is listening, but it's it, it's it's something that we that we built in in Baltimore with the coaches that we have, and you're going to draw inspiration from things that you think is from uh, schemes and people that you feel like are doing some cool stuff out there and have answers for things and. Uh, I think going to college and having being able to, to reach out to a lot of different programs and there's a lot uh, a lot of different programs throughout the country that I really respect and coaches that were really helpful you know translating the game to college and I think what that did is it streamlined a lot of the things that we were trying to do at the pro level and so is it is it just a constant evolution of uh, kind of the the basics the fundamentals that that Rex Ryan and Jim Johnson has, have done. Um, you know, 20, 25 years ago, and then all the great coordinators that we've had in Baltimore that we've been able to evolve the scheme. And uh, ultimately, you know, the coaches that we had last year, uh, we decided, you know, we took it a certain direction given the players we had. So I'd say it's adaptable, uh, but we we're always going to be aggressive on how we want to do it. You know, people ask about our blitz rates and all that. that that's just not important to me. It's about putting yourselves in positions to win the down, affecting the quarterback, putting your guys in position to have success. Mike, you have such a unique background. How did you get attracted to the defensive side of the ball in the first place? Why, why was that where your talents went? 
That's a great question. I don't, I don't know really the answer to that. I think, well, initially when I got the internship in Baltimore, they told me I was going to be on offense, and I showed up and they said I was going to be on defense. So that's probably the easiest <laughs> question to answer. But it, I think it just fits my mentality, frankly. You know, it's uh, offensive guys, you know, sometimes, sometimes it isn't really, we don't get along too well. But, you know, um, but yeah, I just started, started, started when I coached high school football at Cedar Shoals. And, um, had an affinity for the linebacker position and went from there. John, you mentioned the, the Baltimore game and not wanting to feel that way again coming off the field. Was there something you saw in him or in how he how they played and all that that made you you know really stuck out with you that day at all? Yeah, I think talking is I mean there's a feeling that we all we all were there and felt it, right? But uh, in talking to the players, you know, several several of the offensive players were like, What what was that? What just happened, right? And uh, you know, I talked to Trying to pick the players' brains, you know, here and there throughout the season, and that totally stood out. And I, I forget, you know, um, which player it was, and but they they said they're like, who was that? What was that? Who was that? You know, they don't. A lot of players aren't like, who's the coordinator over there? What was that all about? <laughs> For Mike, uh, you're obviously replacing a legendary coach here in Pete Carroll, and I'm just wondering, have you crossed paths with him much? Have you developed any kind of relationship? And how do you go about kind of uh, injecting your own personality and style and philosophy into a place when there was someone who was there for as long as he was? Yeah, I've never met, never met Pete. Uh, I've always admired him from afar. He's got a, I have a tremendous amount of respect for him. Um, his track record is probably a Hall of Fame coach. Um, you know, Pete has a great personality, but it's his and it's authentic to, to who he is as a person. I think that's why uh, the players resonate with him and how he had, why he has such a great reputation and, he's, and his track record is what it is. Uh, I have a different personality, you know, and you'll get to know me, but my plan is to be myself every day. And you're just gonna get me, you know? So I, it's, not a, it's not a facade, there's no alter agendas or anything like that, but it's all about um, what's the best interest for the team, what's the best interest for the players, and uh, how we can be successful. And I got a, there's a sense of humor in there, I promise. You know, some people like it more than others, but uh, uh, it'll come out. And, and it, but it's just, if you're trying to be somebody that you're not, it's just, it's, one, it's exhausting, and two, people see right through it. I'm glad you asked that question. Th th those guys are um, some of the most authentic, competitive people I've ever been around. And the players know when, when it's real. And they love their players. And they have their players' backs. And they're willing to do whatever it takes you know, to put them in a position to succeed. And sometimes it's, it's tough love, but it's, it's uh, telling them the truth, being respectful. Um, they, ha they go about it two completely different ways, but they end up in the same spot. Why are your sisters making a place in here? Well, uh, they're just incredibly courageous people. Um, have had uh, just a great effect on me. Just you know, they're they're older than me. They're four and six years older than I am. And uh, anyone with older siblings, you're always looking up to them and how they do things. But talk about people that have taken leaps of faith throughout their career and careers, and with their families and who they are as people and. Um, it's just, uh, it was just, it's just easy, you know, you're just chasing them, and uh, I love them, they're, they're pretty awesome. Mike, as you've risen through the ranks and accomplished all you have in such a short amount of time, what's the biggest thing you've learned that's allowed you to be, have, enjoy the success that you've had so far? Yeah, when, when I hear people tell me that you've risen really fast, it, it just makes me a little uncomfortable, because that's not really the goal. You're, you're, you're trying to use. You're trying to be in the role that you are, to help the team the best you can. And uh, ultimately, as your roles and your responsibilities increase, you know the ability to do that becomes it, it is greater. You know, so um, I think I think that's the mentality you have to have. And the more the more you're in this in this business and you're and you're and you're around these great people and the, you know, the competition so you realize that it, there's no way it can be just you. It's just. There's so much. It's, it's a, there's so much power in the effort of the group, and kind of unlocking the people around you. And so the whole goal is about empowering those folks and, and trying to bring the best out of them. 
and then ultimately, you know, as an organization, that's that's really where you go when that's how you go far. You know, is together. <coughs> Um, I, you know, I, it's not, I haven't actually heard I'm a player's coach that often, so that's a little surprising to me. But I, I, I just, like I said, I think it's about generating the relationship with them, um, constant communication, telling them the truth, telling them with love. Um, and I think it's a consistency that you have to have where, again, the players will know. So they'll know if whether we're consistent or not in our approach and uh, whether we have their backs. Now, we're gonna tell them the truth and there's gonna be a standard here about how we're gonna play, but everybody's gonna understand that from day one. And, uh, and ultimately, I think why, where you have success is the players start to hold each other accountable as well because they understand what the standard is as well. So, um, but I think if you're consistent and you're honest, uh, I think they respect that. Mike, you're 20, 20, 2020 Baltimore Ravens. You go down to Michigan and then you go back why and what did you learn from that that experience to help you? Well, um, talk about where I, you know, going through your career. I, I ultimately I did want to be a defensive coordinator at some point, and and it was a great opportunity to do that. You know, for a coach that I, or a person that I really respected, and Jim, and how he and how he ran his program, and um, it just I mean it was it was the University of Michigan, you know, and it, that's big time football, and. Uh, and they were hungry to win. And uh, what I learned when I showed up is we had, we had some awesome people in that building, some great players. I don't know if Mike Moe's here, but, um, but Mike was part of that. And uh, they were hungry to win. And um, that, was a lot, that was an awesome experience um, to build, bring people together, generate a common goal, and just go chase it every day. And that's what we're going to do here. Mike, your, your Ravens guys described your, your philosophy as flexible and adaptable. When did that become the most important thing to you, and, and why is that the identity of your defense? Well, the offense is out there too good just to run three things and just say, all right, hey, we're going to beat you. you know? So I, I, as a f philosophically, again, I think we're all in this thing together, and the players need to know that we're trying to put them in advantageous positions. So we're constantly trying to give them little margins of um, – advantages and if you're not doing that then you know what are you doing as a coach whether it's through technique or fundamentals or communication or scheme uh, so the system that we run is built on concepts that are adjustable and we can layer it together and you know we're not going to get there overnight it's going to be a process you know but we have we have we understand what that takes and um, the cadence will uh, will vary you know based on how fast the guys can pick it up and then what they can do. So it's, it's not going to, the, the, the spirit of how we play and the principles of how we play, what you've seen on the tape in Baltimore will be the same, but I can't guarantee you the, the schematics will be the same uh, here because, you know, I just, we're not sure what we're good at yet. Mike, a couple more. Obviously, you're the defensive coach, that's your specialty, but it's a quarterback driven league. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the state of the quarterback world, Gene Smith, being the center of the year, and, and how that played into your decision? Well, we've played against Gino. He's a really good player. Pretty sure he's at the Pro Bowl right now, you know. Um, but we're going to build around the quarterback. Uh, you got to. Just like we said on defense, we built the system around the players on defense. We're going to build it around the players on offense. And the most, player, most important player is the, is the QB. So um, we'll see how the whole situation shakes out over time. Um, but excited to, to get to meet those guys. Drew, I mean, uh, I'm there. I talked to Gino briefly after our game and told him how much I respected him. Not anticipating I'd see him in six months or three months or however long it's been. But um, yeah, I'm just really excited to meet the rest of the guys. You know, especially especially the QBs and uh, get to know them and kind of see what makes them tick, so we can start to build the system around them. Mike, in regards to your offensive coordinator, is it important to find somebody who has called plays in the NFL? Does that even matter on the on the list of uh, uh, things that you want from an OC? Uh, it's not near the top of the list. We're looking for the right the right person to come in here and, and build this thing. So we want someone that's open minded, that has a growth a growth mindset, that can connect with their players, and uh, and build build a system you know that's that's unique to the Seattle Seahawks. That's going to live here for a long time, and he's going to be the one spearheading it. Mike, how close were you work to taking that job at KPMG? I mean, was that kind of <laughs> well, I initially signed the letter, and then 
didn't feel right when I did it, but I did sign it, and then, and then when I, you know the story, but when Baltimore called, I, I called the recruiter and said, uh, "Thanks, but no thanks." She goes, "You realize you can't work at KPMG anymore, right?" And I was like, "I think I'm okay with that." <laughs> what was the question? Where do things stand on? Well, well, I mean, uh, this is a funny story. We, we, you know, we went, met everybody initially in the, uh, eight, you know, in the entryway yesterday. We literally walked upstairs and we went to work on the staffing. So he hasn't even been on a tour yet. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't <laughs> tell you where the indoor is. So I guess that's full disclosure. Locker room, I got no chance. Mike, what do you think is going to be the biggest challenge for you taking on head coaching responsibility? Duties that come with that and making this transition up the ladder. There's going to be a lot of challenges. I mean, we're 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 going to have adversity and. Um, What's the biggest one? I can't answer that. But I, I just know that if we're going to take the approach we have every day and attack it head on, then you know we'll be able to get through it. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you, guys. Thanks for coming out.